absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. Mm. Um, let us imagine that you sign up for a Mission Impossible and then you start making it. Uh, were you ever really sure of what you were going to be in for? No. <laughs> Not at all. I don't think they knew. I think it's... Uh, it, the, the movie ends up sort of telling itself and the plot becomes a metaphor for the making of a Mission Impossible film. <laughs> and McHugh would be very transparent about that. He'd be like, no matter what I want it to be, the film is going to be what it wants. And it's he'll come up with an idea and then would film it and then it might change on the day. It might change in edit editing. We might come back and reshoot something. He's always... Both he and Tom are always looking for the thing that's landing in the f in the frame and on the screen for the audience. So they're always confronting their own work, going, "What does this say? What does this communicate? Is this what we want? How do we push it further?" That's amazing. Yeah. So uh, you're telling me this is organic, on the go. Uh, I mean, it, it obviously they know the blueprint for creating a movie like this. The yeah. set pieces, there is such meticulous preparation that goes in t terms of the designing, the engineering mechanics of something they'll invent technology you know the, there are cameras that are on the bike that tom jumps off the cliff on that hadn't been invented up until this point so that's all very like that's years in the making right but in terms of the creativity in the scenes things are up for grabs so it might be that tom shouts out a suggested new line for me or McHugh goes come up with something else or you know, um, it's all physical behavior. You know, for the first, I think, 100 days of filming, I didn't have any dialogue. It was all action. And so what was exciting for me as an actor, who's so used to, as you can probably tell, talking a lot, <laughs> that um, I got to figure out the st her story and her physicality. And also the dance between her and Ethan, you know, being handcuffed and drifting and in that car together, you're working out how they can be how they're relating to each other in a physical space rather than relying on dialogue. Of course, and in a quite a confined space, um, I would argue. I'll come back to that in a second, but McHugh has described your character, I'm not sure if it's you personally, but maybe, as a chaotic, a chaotic force of nature, <laughs> which I loved. Uh, and I would like to get your sense of when uh, what you think uh, is the beating heart of Grace. Oh, that's a great question. Um, I think the beating heart of Grace is... The thing that she fears and is running away from is also the thing that she craves and wants and needs the most, which is connection. So to have someone be a strictly single o, as she describes mm. herself, an orphan, someone that doesn't have any loyalty, that's out for herself, that's always ducking and diving and trying to get out, um, means that somewhere along the line she's made up other human beings are not to be trusted. And that must be a very, very painful and lonely ex existence for her. And so I think therein lies her wound, and therefore it means that I can try and access that emotional depth in moments to make her much more grounded than just this chaotic, you know, or, um, you know, surface level character. When you have that going on, and as you say, you're handcuffed to Tom, let's just separate those two things for a moment and put you as a human being next to Tom, handcuffed in a tiny car and a big car, racing through the streets of Rome. I mean, it, it, what is going on in here? I, I know that you're looked after and that it's safety is paramount, but what's going on in your noodle or maybe in your adrenals at that point? It's like, it's like I felt like I was with the eye of the storm. You know, I, I'm sure you've had this, everyone's had this, in moments that are adrenalized where the stakes feel high or you're suddenly, this is a now or never moment, you have to take action. Things, you can't think. No. You, if you think, you'll think yourself out of doing it. And that felt the experience for me. You just, you're in it and you're present. And because he's so present, I, I just had to, I felt like the, the thing that I was asked to do as Haley was to just match that presence, to be attentive to him, receptive, and also active with him. So even if there wasn't dialogue, or even if it was it was you know, me being handcuffed and sat in the passenger seat, or vice versa, that we were just connected to each other. And so I think that sort of, it creates this sort of almost, yeah, this calm, eye of the storm kind of feeling to it, which is great. It's only in retrospect or watching the film, I go, <laughs> what am I doing? You know, at one point though, I remember being in the car with him and I looked at him during the setup and, you know, a, a, a moment of kind of calm, which was to do with like, you know, lights or technical changes happening. And I just looked at him and I was just, I just had a moment of going, I came out of the bubble and I went, 
I'm, I'm in a Tom Cruise movie. You're Tom Cruise. And he went, I know, I know, right? Like he couldn't believe it himself. Like he's such a, an enthusiasm for what he did, does and an appreciation for where he's at within his own career. It's, be, it's really beautiful. Oh, I, I bet. And um, that leads perfectly into my last question. When you are in a situation which is Tom and McHugh and they're just, you know, they're kind of joined at the hip um, and they keep saying that production just interrupts a long conversation about film all of the totally. time. Totally. Yeah, I get that sense. So what is your biggest takeaway from being a part of that kind of relationship and the synergy? Oh, wow. that's a, oh, Your questions are fantastic. Yeah. Um, there is the, oh, so keep keep looking, keep confronting, keep searching. Mm -hmm. uh, so confront your own work and look at it objectively, going, what is landing here? What was my intention? Uh, is it, has it, has that been achieved? And so developing this objective eye. Um, and I think that means just always remaining a student of your own craft. Um, and that's exciting because it means that you're able to move forward with something as opposed to rest on what you think might work to what worked before. And it, it's a it's a much more exciting place to live too. Um, a lesson for life, I think you've just described. Oh. Um, I need